is a very unusual uh, webcast that we're doing. You are, in essence, in our studio. Uh, we are connected with uh, seven universities uh, and across... We're now ready to go over to Prague. Green paper, by the way, was issued not that the commissioner would give you all the answers, but on the contrary, that he would help us to gain your views on what are the best avenues. There are 30 questions, and I don't expect that everybody everywhere would simply address all of them. On the contrary, we want clearly an outcome which would show where do we believe that, that the changes are most necessary, most obvious, most needed, and that we can also do them. How long is the comment period open? What will you do when, yeah. when you get them? It is open, if I remember well, till the end of, uh, till the end of uh, August. So we have the freedom of the movement of goods, services, uh, uh, people and, and capital. But unfortunately, we can't say that we have a freedom of movement of knowledge nowadays in Europe. He said that Europe today is seen as a team of stars, but not really as a star team. But uh, it's very rare for me and I think most of us to have an opportunity to talk directly with the people that are involved in shaping policies. Here's a suggestion. Rather than talking about technology development and research centers as the only focus of research and development policy, think about innovation clusters, which contain both innovation and inventions, say knowledge. And that could be a hotbed for industry and academia cooperation and that will deliver the desired mobility. Gentlemen, it's right. I think we should trust to the researchers more and I think that unfortunately the concept of the European spending Uh, Norway is um, uh, Hello to everybody from Prague. Uh, that, uh, we are extremely delighted. This is Andrew Herbert from Microsoft Research um, in Aachen rather than Cambridge today. I think we're talking about very important um, topics. And our experience is the American trained PhDs um, often end up in a, a more senior role because they have a, a broader experience and are better trained as researchers. And so I think a key question for European universities is what we can do um, to make our PhD students more competitive. It's going to be very challenging for Europe and other, uh, and other countries around the world to challenge and to um, uh, really uh, have a position against China and India for the next couple of years. If you know that 100,000 engineers graduate every year from these universities. Once these professors or these researchers are in industry, they suddenly find themselves entrepreneurs. And that is a problem. Not that they are not good entrepreneurs, but that they now have to go to the value chain of enterprise, which is research, development and innovation. Seamless mobility should be a goal for researchers, should, should be a goal in all over Europe. And especially for researchers coming to Europe, it's often uh, difficult to go from one country to another. So one aim should be to have a scientific visa in order to facilitate the mobility. The question is now, is an idea of a scientific visa, has an idea already been discussed and how realistic you think is the implementation of such a visa? So I would like to really to thank you for, for an idea, for organizing something like that. It is uh, rare that you can speak with such large an audience and uh, also with an audience of such high of quality. But I think that's exactly what we need nowadays if we want truly to go on with the idea which is developed there in the